allowing me to participate in this uh, important hearing. I would like to thank all the witnesses for traveling here today as well. Um, as mentioned, the Bristol Bay watershed is the world's largest sockeye salmon fishery, uh, not only in existence but flourishing. And as a representative from Washington State, I have seen the detrimental effects of a struggling uh, salmon population uh, and, and what it can, how it can affect all stakeholders, um, from fishermen to our tribal communities. In Washington State, we can all agree that the viability of our fisheries, whether in the State of Washington or in Alaska, are a key economic driver and a part of our cultural heritage. And healthy fisheries create jobs. Bristol Bay Watershed supports over 14,000 jobs from Alaska to Maine, and at least 5,000 Washington State jobs rely on the Bristol Bay sockeye fishery, including a good number of my constituents. In examining the proposal, I have serious concerns over the environmental effects of building this type of mine right on top of the largest sockeye run in the world. Uh, in fact, according to Pebble's own documents on file at the SAC, at least 80 miles of sockeye spawning streams would be destroyed during the construction of the mine. That is in addition to the lasting impacts that the toxic tailing pools would have on salmon. Um, I hear the Pebble supporters say that the EPA should just wait for a permit application. And I guess I have got a few questions to Mr. Nastri. Uh, first, in your opinion, why is it so important that EPA get this work done sooner than that? Um, second, I know I, I hear from a lot of commercial and sports fishermen in my district who oppose the Pebble Mine and support the EPA's process. Uh, in the Bristol Bay region, uh, what do residents think about the EPA process and what do they think about the mine? And then finally, um, uh, you know, I have a number of tribes in my district. I understand the importance of access to fishing grounds uh, for our tribal communities. Worst case scenario, or let us say medium case scenario, we have a leakage from the toxic tailing pools. What happens to subsistence fishers in the region? Are there other streams nearby that can sustain them? In your view, is the EPA doing enough to make sure subsistence fishers in the Bristol Bay region have a voice during the process? Thank you. Thank you. You asked a lot of questions, and hopefully I will be able to answer them all. But if I forget one, please remind me. Uh, with regards to the level of support, uh, as I mentioned earlier, over 75 percent of the comments that were generated with regards to the watershed assessment were in support of. And within Bristol Bay, over 95 percent of the commenters supported EPA's watershed assessment. Um, with regard to the subsistence aspect, there was a, a tremendous amount of outreach uh, on the cultural and subsistence issue. And in fact, there were comments that were submitted by various villages that talk about the potential harm to a subsistence way of life uh, and to a cultural identity should the salmon be impacted in a way that is feared. And so there is a tremendous amount of effort both in terms of addressing the subsistence aspect. There is a tremendous level of support for EPA on its watershed assessment. And I am sorry, sir, the very first portion of your question um, in your opinion, why is it so important that the EPA uh, get this work done s sooner than waiting for a permit application? So right now what we have and what really prompted the request into EPA is uncertainty. And as Senator Murkowski said, that uncertainty has caused anxiety and frustration within the communities. And that has a direct impact on the economic well-being of the area. We have heard from a number of groups and organizations that said they will not invest in the area because they don't know what the outcome is. There is also the ongoing threat of stigma, stigma in terms of are these fish going to be something that is really valuable right now? And the value of this fishery is tremendous. And so providing and addressing uh, a response that addresses the uncertainty is extremely important. And not only are there the economic aspects, you know, the 14,000 jobs, the 1.5 billion contribution, but you have the social impacts as well. And I'm sure that the village elders that are here today could share with you stories about what it's doing to their youth. I've had the chance to talk to some of those youth, and they say that this uncertainty has impacted them greatly. And so providing the certainty not only to all the people that are involved, that rely on the fishery, that live on the fishery, but to everybody so that they know what needs to be done and how we can address this and move forward and continue to have that very viable and healthy fishery and economy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield back.